Good evening, everyone. You know, whenever I come here, I always say it so many times. It's like coming home. And if ever I felt like I'm home was tonight. You said, why? Because our church, now we're celebrating 10 years. And up to this time, we never had live music. This is strange. 10 years now. So when I look around, Jenny, <laughs> I write home, boy. <laughs> we don't have live music. Our church may be the only church in this country. <laughs> don't have live music. We have a drum set, nobody to play. We have a keyboard, nobody to play. But we worship God every Sunday morning. You don't believe me? You ask Brother Glenn Roy when he come up here. <laughs> he tell you, amen. We just make the best out of it. Amen. And I... I compliment the worship team. Boy, you remind me of our worship team. <laughs> Real good. <laughs> Amen. So we bless God, and it's good to be here. Sister Ramkison sent her love. The last few months, I just keep busy. I was not out of the country, but a number of special things we were doing at Longdonville area. A lot of open-air meetings. A couple of weeks ago, I did a series of meetings outside of Princess Tong, New Grant area. Uh, the Pentecostal assemblies over there were celebrating 20 years in ministry and uh, the pastor's appreciation service. So I was there to minister for the few services to be with them. This past week, I was in the, with Pastor Sam ministering. And from tonight, I'll be going nonstop for five services, uh, three on Sunday. I'll be here tonight and tomorrow. I'm here tonight, tomorrow in the Shaguanas area. Then... Uh, Sunday morning, 8 o'clock, my, my church, 10 o'clock, I'll be Pastor Arnold Gadram Singh. And then at 2.30 in San Fernando, Tabernacle of Prayer, celebrating 38 years of ministry. They've got 22 churches. We'll be coming together and 41 ministers. They'll be having an ordination service on Sunday. So I'll be the guest speaker. Cindy, is you? Look, I see a member of my congregation here, Pastor. She knows what I'm talking about. Amen. So it'd be nonstop from tonight. That's my schedule. But I'm never too busy to come here, Jenny. Never. When I come here, I'm so refreshed. Somebody remarked, you take a, a low haircut. I said, not necessarily. The hair just getting scanned. <laughs> Amen. So you don't know when I will turn up on a Friday, and you mightn't see much. But, uh, but thank God for the few. Amen. Good to see you. <laughs> Let's go right into the word this, tonight. Amen. Right into the word. I want to direct your attention to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 9. There's an incident here I'm sure many of you are well acquainted with. Over the years, I've had the opportunity so many times to share on this story that is recorded here from St. John, chapter 9. I want to begin to read from verse 1. This is centered upon a man that was born blind and Jesus restored to him back his sight. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, or rabbi, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifested in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the daytime represent the opportune time. The night cometh that no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Sing that in your spirit, all right? He's the light of the world, all right? All the other lights will out, but this light will always keep lighting, all right? When he had thus spoken... Watch this now. He spat on the ground. 
He made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And Jesus said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And this man whose eyes he anointed with the clay, immediately, without delay, went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Hallelujah. I put a little title for the message to give us a direction for the message. And it goes like this. He, Jesus, can make the difference if there's no resistance. Are you following me? He can make the difference. And let me just put another word. So you can go the distance without resistance. Amen. Now this message got two parts. That I want to share with you. Here we observe, and I don't know what day it was. The scripture never state what day it was. Maybe it was a Sunday, a Monday, a Tuesday, or some other day of the week. The day does not matter. That Jesus, together with his disciples, passed by. Now, for my observation, looking closely at the life of Jesus during the course of his earthly ministry, every time he passed by, something good always happened. And this day in question, when he passed by, he saw a man who was blind from his birth. This man looked very pitiful. He deserved much sympathy. But what is amazing about Jesus, in spite of his busy schedule, he took time to notice this man. And this is amazing. He must be complimented for that. Because we live in a world today, and you will agree with me, if you do not have a certain rank, or you're not in a certain clique, not too many people will notice you. They don't have time for you. But this is what made Jesus exceptional. Not only in his day and time, but even in this day. Whether you be rich or whether you be poor. Whether you be black or whether you be white. Whether you live in a country area or you live in a city. Whether you have plenty or whether you have empty. Jesus always got time for you. Amen. Give him a hand of praise somebody. In contact with this man that was blind was a very familiar sight in the days of Jesus. Time will not permit me as we go through the gospels. We will read a number of times that Jesus came in contact with people that was blind. And as they cry out to him in faith, he was able to bring hope to them. You recall in Luke chapter 18, in the end chapter, while he was on his way to Jericho, this blind man who was sitting by the wayside by the name of Bartimaeus heard the commotion. He heard that Jesus was passing by and with faith and confidence cry out to Jesus. Jesus stood still, commanded the man to be brought unto him. And the rest of the story is history. He restored back his sight. Then another time that Jesus ministered to a man who was blind. And he asked the man, how do you see now? And he said, I see men like trees. And Jesus said, it's not supposed to be so. You're not supposed to see men like trees. You're supposed to see men like men. And so he rested his hands on him a second time and made his vision good. So on and on we can go. But this was a very unique situation. 
This man was blind not because he got into an accident or maybe somebody got on him and took advantage and destroyed his sight. But he was born that way. So as we look at the condition of his, this man, like I said earlier, he deserved much sympathy. As a result of his condition, he was deprived of many comforts in life. I believe he was unable to move around freely without the help of someone to guide him around. And maybe when there were those who were not available, he was left alone. He was not privileged maybe to attend weddings and, and different parties freely like some other people. He was restricted in a sense. Hopeless and helpless. It seems as though a dark cloud was hanging over his head. All because uh, he had no sight. He was unable to see. So he was the least among the people in the community. But then when his disciples saw that, they were very concerned. They were concerned to the extent that they became very disturbed. Even though they had the privilege to walk with Jesus and to witness the many miracles from a human standpoint, they could not understand why this man was born that way. There were those who was able to see and maybe for a while the thought was coming to them that God is an unjust God. Why God should allow some to see and some not to see. And I believe even in this day and time, maybe some of us and some of you, that when you see certain situations, you entertain that thought in your mind. Why certain people are like that and why some people are like that. And sometimes we do not understand and we feel so troubled. And if we do not guard our thoughts, we can easily come to the conclusion, maybe God is an unjust God. So often people say, well, life uh, is unfortunate and, uh, you know, life is this and life is that and, and how some people can have this and some cannot have this. And I believe even though that the disciples they were able to witness the many miracles of Jesus and they had a high level of spiritual knowledge from a human standpoint, they were troubled about that. So they felt a measure of uneasiness. They said, Master, what is the reason why? Why he was born that way? Is it because of the sins of his parents? It is because of some kind of judgment that was placed upon him by God? Maybe because he did some, uh, his parents or family did something wrong? And Jesus said, no. That's not the reason why. He was born that way. That the works of God should be manifested in him. And I believe sometimes through the permissive will of God, he allows certain things to happen. And don't even try sometimes to find out. Just leave it like that. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. He allows certain things to happen so he can manifest his power and his glory. Sometimes human beings try to interfere in the work of God. And by so doing, they hinder the work of God. Amen. And the opportunity is never given to see God in operation. So Jesus was simply saying, I know what you're thinking. Take it easy. Don't come to any kind of evil conclusion. Nobody was responsible why this man was born that way. But he was born that way because the works of God should be manifested in him. And then Jesus went on to give some enlightenment. As you will notice here in verse 4, he said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. As you will observe in the scriptures uh, that Jesus was mandated by the Father. He said, the words I speak is not of myself, but of the Father. The works I do is not of myself, uh, but of the Father. You see, he and the Father was one and still is one. He said, if any man have seen me, they have seen the Father for both of us are one. It's amazing how Abraham came long before Jesus, uh, but Jesus declared with authority before Abraham was I am. And then the, the writer to the book 
of Colossians went on to declare in relation to Jesus. He said all things was created by him, visible as well as invisible. We can truthfully declare that when we see Jesus tonight or we talk about him, he's one who is more than a prophet. He's more than a historical figure. He's more than just a miracle worker. But this Jesus we are talking about and preaching about and worshiping, amen, he is God incarnate. When he came to the face of the earth, it was God coming in flesh and bless the name of the Lord because he's God incarnate. He can do all things. No problem is too big that he cannot solve. No burden is too heavy that he cannot lift. And I'm proud to declare since he's God incarnate, he changes not what he was yesterday, he is today, and he even will be far greater tomorrow. Give him a hand of praise, somebody. So it's worth worshiping Jesus because he can make the difference. You know, Jesus declared in his mission in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He said, this is one of the reasons why I came. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, not only those who are blind physically, but spiritually. So in other words... That Jesus was simply saying, don't worry. You can rest at ease. Amen. The, the difference can come to this man. The situation can be changed. Because I got what it takes. And after speaking to them, I guess all eyes was focused upon Jesus. I believe many people wanted to know what Jesus was going to do. Where he's going to come from, so to speak. And if I may just say it this way in colloquial language, you roll up his sleeves. I know he didn't have no long sleeve shirts in those days, but ready to work. He woke up to the man, and the first thing he did, I want you to notice, he did something that was odd. I want you to write down the word odd. Something that was odd. Many times before we will read that when blind people came to Jesus, he spoke the word. Sometimes he lay hands on them, but he did something different here. Something unusual. Something that was strange. He spat upon the ground. I guess quickly, the skeptics came to the conclusion he was treating this man with scorn. But usually if somebody come close to you and they spit, maybe something is not pleasing or maybe they're smelling something that is not nice. But Jesus spat on the ground. And I guess all eyes was focused upon him. And then the scripture teaches us, he took the saliva, mix it. You know, that is where the Indian word comes, sani. Pastor, you ever hear what I would? That way, he started to mix it like that. That's why they say them Indians are good spin bowlers. <laughs> Because it is sunny, the dal and the rice, good. <laughs> they know how to mix it like that. <laughs> All right. He began to mix it. I guess people were eyeing each other. What in this world that Jesus is doing? And I observe in the scriptures that many times that Jesus and God operate in strange ways. To fulfill his plan and to fulfill his purpose. You recall in the book of Genesis, when God heard the plight of the children of Israel when they were in bondage in Egypt, advantage was taken upon them. They had no union to represent them. They were not privileged to take placards and march around. They could not negotiate with Pharaoh. They had to take what they get. They could not put up any kind of resistance. But they knew the secret of calling upon God. They called upon God and God heard the cry. God was looking for a man to execute his plan. And we will read in the, in the, in the book of Exodus, not Genesis, Exodus. Moses who was feeding his father-in-law sheep in the backside of the desert. He had his eyes glued on his father-in-law sheep. I guess he wanted to give a good account that he was a good son-in-law. He was trustworthy. He was dependable. 
God knew very well that this man, his, he, his focus was upon the sheep. And God wanted to get his attention. And he allowed something strange to happen. God didn't take a piece of stick and hit him on his back. Or take a piece of stone and hit him on his head. But God caused the bush to catch a fire. And while the bush was burning... Moses felt the heat. It was an unusual thing. He began to look at it very closely. And the bush was burning, but yet it was still visible. And I guess Moses came to the conclusion, this is very unusual. This is strange. I've never seen that before. Usually something burning in a quick time, it just disappeared, just vanished. But it is burning, hot, flames, uncontrollable, but yet it is still visible. When Moses took his eyes off his father-in-law's sheep and began to pay attention to that which he assumed was strange, God got his attention. When God got his attention, then God began to reveal his plan and purpose to Moses. I say that to say this, that sometimes God causes unusual things to happen. He allows strange things to happen sometimes that it baffles our minds. Not because you want to play tricks, but because you want to get our attention. Because some of us, we are so focused on our own ideas and our own skills and abilities. We have no time to trust the word of God. Then you will recall there was a man by the name of Balaam. The people who was against Israel came to him, offered him money to curse the people of Israel. Balaam said, I cannot do that. But then I guess they increase <laughs> the package. He went to God. God said, I told you, don't do it. If that's your intention, go ahead. Whatever the consequences are, you'll be responsible. Balaam went his merry way. And you know the end of the story. God allowed his donkey to talk. Amen. He began to whip the donkey and the donkey turned back to him and said, I've been so faithful to you all the time. <laughs> Listen, folks, I don't know for you. <laughs> Amen. All the years I'm preaching and all the spiritual growth I have, I don't think it's easy for me to stand up and hear donkey talking. <laughs> Amen. I ain't able with that, Pastor, to be honest with you. They'll be looking for me somewhere in the mountains right now. <laughs> but God allows something strange to happen. He opened the mouth of the donkey. Not to bring a measure of excitement to Balaam. But he did something that was strange. So Balaam can come to his senses. Here Jesus was doing something that appeared to be odd. I was reading one commentary. And it said, by taking that mud with the saliva and plastering the eyes of the blind man, things like that could make a man who could see blind. <laughs> much more to make a man blind who could see <laughs> amen but then we move on so what he did was odd but then here is something I want to highlight the blind man never objected right on the word objected and this is where, this is where the meat of the message come no resistance he had all rights to protest I guess if he had opened his mouth and rebuked Jesus, he was quite in order. Not because, you're, not because I'm blind and people look down upon me. I'm suffering already, but now you come and you're messing up my face. I believe that was a convincing argument for everybody to say, yes, man, you're right. <laughs> Amen. Enough for people to take Jesus and, and pull him away. But the man stood still. Not because he was desperate. Not because he was foolish. But he was simply allowing Jesus to have his way. Now for a man, for somebody to take spit, dirt and plaster your eyes, you have to have real confidence in them. 
in the true sense, maybe this blind man never saw Jesus. Did something like that. No way in the scriptures tells us that Jesus did something like that. Maybe because he was blind, he never saw Jesus raise the dead. And even though he was deprived of seeing Jesus work in miracles, yet he had a high level of faith in his heart to trust Jesus because he had the confidence in him that Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. You know, we live in a day and time that no longer people want to believe to see. They want to see to believe. And I believe there are a lot of times that Jesus wants to work on your behalf. But we interfere with his works. We got too much pride within ourselves. We want God to do it, but we want God to do it my way. My way or no way. You know, some of us, we set agenda for God, you know. God, I want you to do it so. You know, sometimes I feel a bit guilty that we make God and try to make him a cardi boy, you know. We dictate to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, the scripture tells us that we could tell God what we want, but there's a limit. Are you hearing me? God, I want you to go across there. And while you're going there, go stop in the grocery and pick up a few items for me one time. <laughs> and while you're coming back, my tante sick real bad. You go pass by she house and you go just touch her a little bit. You understand? So we take God sometimes like a carry boy. But most times God have different plans. And if only we can submit. If only we can humble ourselves. And put our ungodly agenda aside. And allow God to do what he desire. I am one of the firm belief that many of us today would be better than what we are. We disrupt the plan of God. We hijack the plan of God. We abandon the plan of God. We walk out on the plan of God. You know, a lot of times you go, sometime in churches, they want you to do it so. And they don't want you to do it so. They believe it is so. And sometimes it seems as though that the Holy Spirit, amen, have no way at all. Because we dictate step one, step two, step three. Let me tell you, sometimes we could be right, but most times we are wrong. So what Jesus was doing to this man appeared to be odd. But here was this man, he was not prepared to put up any resistance. Never did I read in the Bible, he said to Jesus, move your hand away. He stood still. And he allowed Jesus to do what he desired. You know Moses, when he stood before the Red Sea, he had a little rod in his hand. The vicious army of Pharaoh was pursuing in the behind. The raging waters of the Red Sea was in the front. Both sides. It is said almost 70 feet. Uh, the water was raging. Anything instantly will perish. But Moses told the people, stand still. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Don't grumble. Stand still and see the salvation of God. And there are a lot of times, beloved, what we need to do is to stop talking, stop doubting, and doing what we so feel that we want to do and see the salvation of God. Let God have his way and stop putting up resistance. The man stood still. He never objected. And he allowed Jesus to have his way. Then Jesus put him another step further. Since he saw there was no objection, no resistance, he gave him a command. He said, there's a process now. I want you to get up, and I want you to go to this particular place, and I want you to wash your eyes. I never read in the Bible that he said, Jesus is setting me up. You're going to let people laugh at me. You, you, you're asking me to do something to make a fool of myself. But he obeyed. I want you to write down that word. He obeyed. 
First, Jesus did something that was odd. Secondly, the man did not object. Number three, he obeyed the command of God. And according to this story, the very moment Jesus commanded him to go, he did not delay. And you know a lot of times you put God on hold, you know. We're trying to figure out if he will work out. But instantly, the man obeyed. I want to say something here tonight, beloved, that still work. Obedience is the stepping stone to receive the miracles of God. There is no press button to receive the miracles of God. God do not bless people based upon sympathy. God just does not bless people by the way they look and from the location they come from. But God is always willing to bless people when they are willing to obey his voice. In the book of Jeremiah, we read, Jeremiah told the children of Israel, if you obey God, he will be your God, you will be his people. We notice in the book of Genesis, through disobedience, Adam and Eve, they lost out on God. Their fellowship with God was broken. They were driven out of God's presence. Through disobedience, King Saul, who was on the top, came down to the ground. He lost the value of living. In a final analysis, uh, he committed suicide from one thing lead to the next. He disobeyed the command of God. And all around us today, we have seen the hurts of disobedience. What God wants us to do is to obey him. From a human standpoint, sometimes it is so difficult to do what God says. You know, there are some hard sayings in the Bible. But if you really want our miracle, and we really want God to do, amen, what he desire, we need to stand still and allow him to have his way and to take him at his word. The man got up immediately. He went to the place Jesus commissioned him by this particular pool. I never read that he had his own pool and he said, well, listen, that pool too dirty. Yes, I will go, you know, but I have something different in mind. He went exactly where Jesus told him to go. Beloved, he could not but just did that on his own. It was faith in Jesus. And when we have that kind of level of faith, whatever God asks us to do, we will do it. Wherever God wants us to go, we will go. Because God is always seeking our interest. Our interest is always top priority on his list. And so the man obeyed. And when he went, he washed. Here is something I want to highlight. His eyes was open. Write down the word open. He did something that was odd. The man never objected. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. And his eyes was open. I guess there was a long line of people following him where he went. Because there were those... In the days of Jesus, who was always ready to make mockery of Jesus. Already, always to criticize him and put him down. And many felt this was another opportunity to discredit Jesus. So I guess they followed the man closely. But all along the man went with faith. He went with the hope, he went with the assurance. Amen. Obeying the voice of Jesus, nothing is impossible. He washed his eyes. And when he washed his eyes, I never read in the scriptures... He had a little boy to hold him by his hand. Or he had a stick beating on the pavement, crying aloud with a very sympathetic voice. Please clear the way. The blind come in. <laughs> he went blind. And he came back seeing. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Nothing is too hard for God to do. I believe we make it hard. We make it difficult. Why? Because we put up resistance. God is asking us tonight, beloved, to stand still. He wants to do a work in our lives. Now, I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're seeking God for. Maybe some of you have given up hope and say, well, 
Years has come and gone. I'm still the same. I'm on the cutting edge. I'm still struggling with that problem. Nothing is wrong with God. He's still the same. What God is saying today, stop putting up resistance. What he was able to do yesterday, he can still do today. For he said, I am the Lord that changes not. The man came back seeing all because of the power of Jesus. But hold on. Hold on. The people who was around noticed the man. And they said one to another. Is not this the same man who used to sit begging? Is not the same man who was blind chanting, please help the blind, have mercy, have pity on me? And I guess somebody quickly said, well, I want to believe he's his twin brother, you know. He can't be, he, he born that way. Maybe he resembled the fella. <laughs> so they walk up to him. And I guess a fella say, you know, like sometimes pastor people go to him and say, um, excuse me, might be wrong, you know. But forgive me for wrong. You look like somebody I know. So you could be right. Well, I could be wrong, you know. Are you Brother Ramki soon? I said, yes. Well, I thought so, you know, by the voice. And I'm so glad when they say that, especially when I'm buying something in the market. Most of them, they say, well, Pastor, pay for it. Since it's you, Since it's you it's all right, don't pay for it. It has happened always. I went to a drugstore the other day. <laughs> I went to buy some medication. The young lady there preparing it, and I find she watching me. I knew she had a cross eye, you know. <laughs> I knew very well. <laughs> then in the end, she said, um, I want to ask her something. You brother Ramki soon? I said, yes. I said, why you ask that? She said, by the voice. She said, I want to bless you today. I said, true. <laughs> Don't worry to go by the cashier. <laughs> I'll pay for this. So in the same sense, I guess people, they look at the man, they said, it's impossible. It can't be that man. From small, I know him blind. I know his father. I know his mother. So I can hear a lady talking to her husband about it. And the husband said, well, look, why are you bombarding me? Why are you not going to ask him man yourself? And she walked up to him and said, were you the same man who was sitting there, blind? And he said, yes. What is the reason now you can see? Did you drink something? Did somebody mix up something and give it to you? Somebody wave any kind of black stick around you? He said, no. He was willing to offer a testimony. Write down the word offer. Without any hesitation. He was not fearful. He was not afraid what people will say or do to him. Straight away, knowing what Jesus did, he said, a man called Jesus, bless the name of the Lord. I want to tell you something, folks. When Jesus woke a miracle in your life, you don't have to worry what people will say or what they will think about you. You need to step up on the plate and you need to come forward, amen, and tell them about Jesus. The man was not hesitant. He said a man called Jesus came. And I guess he gave them the whole story. How he spat on the ground. He anointed my eyes. And how he opened my eyes. Bless the name of the Lord. Time will not permit me. But I believe he went into details. And I guess he said, if you know other blind people, bring them to, to Jesus. What he did for me, he can do for you. And I want to say tonight, it is the same way. Maybe in the true sense, in a literal way. He has not given you sight. Maybe you were not blind. But he he took you from darkness and he brought you into the light. He took you from the gutter and he took the gutter out of you. He took you dirty and he made you clean. Bless the name of the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. You need to stand up in the midst of your critics and offer a testimony of praise and a testimony of thanksgiving. He said it is Jesus who did it. And I am proud. I close the message tonight. 
to make a strong emphasis and say, He can make the difference. No matter what you are facing, no matter how difficult it might be, no matter how big the need might be, whatever you're going through, regardless of what people say, if there's no resistance. From a human standpoint, we may not be able to figure it out all. Sometimes it don't add up to what God says sometimes. Or you could love somebody that hates you. Yeah, man, out if you fall by your heart, say, Lord bless him. <laughs> Amen. A man curse you. You still have to bless him. Like I always say, you're traveling in a car and you come out and a man just pull the door on your finger and it smell, it, your fingers swell like a moko. Amen. But yeah, God bless you, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless. But you could do that. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult. Amen. It's difficult. Let's not put up any resistance. Don't let people blow your mind. Don't let these skeptics that they come with this new thing they're offering and say, well, God can't do it. What he used to do, amen, he can't do it again. Those days are over. Let me tell you, the God of yesterday is still the God of today. He's still in office. Amen. Nobody voted me out as yet. He's still in office. He's still in control. And he still got our interests at heart. And his desire is to bless us and to make us better than what we are. But as long as you put up resistance, you'll remain in the same position. You will be going in circles. And I always say, movements are not necessarily advancement. Because a lot of people moving and in the same place. But God could take you to the distance. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither enter into the hearts of men. What God got in store for those who will love him. Amen. I want to challenge you tonight as I get ready to pray. Maybe God is working in your path. He has not forsaken you. The problem is not God. The problem is you. If you wait to understand everything about what God is doing in your life, you will never be able to understand because his ways are higher than our ways. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Let's trust him. Let's wait upon him. The miracle may not come overnight. It may not come the way that we want it to be. Amen. It may come the least way we expect him. But I've come to the conclusion, however he does it, let him do it. I'm ready to accept it. Because at the end of the day, whether I like it or not, if I allow him to have his way, I will be better than what I am. I am ready to pray tonight. I don't know what God is saying to you. Maybe physically, you're not blind, but spiritually. Just like this man, physically, he was blind, he was cheated of the comforts of life. Spiritually, Maybe you're enjoying all the comforts of life. But spiritually, you're cheated of what God got in store. Because you cannot see what he's offering to those who will seek him first. So he can give you spiritual sight. He can wash you with his blood. He can change your ways. And no matter what you are facing tonight, he can pull you from that area. And put you on higher heights. Bow your heads. I want to pray. You have never given your life to Jesus. Maybe God is speaking to you. I hear people say, Pastor, God is talking to me through dreams. God allows certain things to happen. He allowed it to give me a message. He sent people on my path to say something. All is for my interest, but you're still putting up resistance because there's a high level of doubts in your heart and you're allowing the enemy to distract you. This man never allowed the enemy to distract him, but he stood still. He came to the conclusion, this is my time. And I believe this is your time to, right now that God wants to do something for you. 
you need to stand still. Put all your personal agenda aside and let God work his agenda. Let him do whatever he desire. And I trust him because with him, we are always on the winning side. Always on the winning side. Do not put up any resistance tonight. He will never put you to shame. He'll never do things, if you allow him to do, to discredit you. But at the right time, he will bring honor and glory. I want to pray tonight in this congregation, if you're a father, a mother, a son or a daughter, a visitor, uncle, aunt, you have never given your life to Jesus. He do not want to take the direction that he took towards this blind man. I'll see to it tonight. Amen. Maybe I'll be, I'll be tempted to, to say to him if he planned to do it, to spit on the ground <laughs> and rub your eyes. I'll, I'll be tempted to say, Master, <laughs> your blood got sufficient power, but his blood got sufficient power tonight. You do not want to plaster your eyes with any dirt, but you want to cover you with his blood because his blood can cleanse us from all our sins. For there is power in that blood. No matter how many sins you have committed, no matter how many wrongs you have done, like I always say, no man has gone too far that God cannot bring back. There is hope for the hopeless if you will give him the opportunity to rule and reign in your life. How many of you tonight will raise your hand as an indication and said, say, Brother Ramke soon, I want him to cover me with his blood. I want him to cleanse me. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want him to be the Lord of my life. Too long, I'm struggling. I cannot continue that way. It is a long time now. I've been putting up resistance. I'm not getting better. I'm getting worse. I know it in my heart. It is glaring. It is showing. But tonight, I want to put a stop to it. I want him to have his way. I'm ready to stand still and to see the works of God be demonstrated. If you need that prayer tonight, forgiveness of sin, just lift up your hand. I'm going to pray with you. Anybody tonight, just lift it up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You can have it down. Somebody else, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Somebody else tonight. Thank you. I see that hand. God bless you. Somebody else. I'm ready to pray. All right. Hallelujah. Let's all stand, please. <coughs> Those of you that lifted your hands, could you give me the opportunity just to pray a simple prayer with you? Just leave where you are tonight and just come. We like to pray with you. You lifted your hands. I believe you lifted up tonight because of great concern. Come. Thank you, lady. God bless you. Somebody else? Quickly, come. Come on, I want to pray with you. You lifted your hands. Another person over there? Come. If you did not raise your hands, you can still come. You can still come. Hallelujah. We like to pray with you tonight. This man who was born blind, he was simply demonstrating, Jesus, do whatever you desire. For the time has come for my breakthrough. Whatever you see to do, Lord, you do it because I trust you. You got the power to do it. In the true sense, it was not the spit. It was not the clay that opened the eyes. But it was the power of Jesus. And I'm glad to let you know tonight, he still got that power. He still got that power. And he can do all things. Is there one more person want to come quickly? Before we begin to pray, one more person. One more person. Those of you who are standing there tonight, I believe there is no distance in prayer as well. 
And maybe you're carrying great concern for loved ones and friends. Maybe members of your family that is not saved. I want you to lift them up before God right now. Lift up that husband, that father, that mother, that wife. When I think about Abraham, how he interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. We can intercede tonight. Because of the concern we are carrying, God is no respecter of person. I want you to lift them up before God as I pray for these tonight. Just lift up your right hand, put it on the left side by your heart as a point of contact. And I want you to say tonight to the Lord, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming into this world. Lord Jesus, I thank you for going to the cross, for shedding your blood for my sins. You said in your words, I got power to forgive sins. And if we confess our sins to Jesus, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Lord Jesus, I cry out to you. Please have mercy on me. Forgive me of all my sins. I am deeply sorry for them. Come into my heart. Take your rightful place. Change my life. Give me a sincere desire from this very moment to follow you, to serve you all the days of my life. I believe you have forgiven me. I believe you have heard my cry. So I want you to lift up both hands now and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for breaking the yokes and setting me free. So, Father, I thank you tonight for this young lady. Thank you for accepting her. Thank you for forgiveness of sins. Thank you for cleansing her. Lord, continue to touch her with that desire to follow you all the days of her life. Thank you for this precious one tonight from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Touch her right now, Lord God, with that desire to serve you. Thank you for our sister here, Lord. Nothing is impossible with you. Touch her. Thank you, Lord, for bringing her into the fold. We just thank you, Lord, for accepting her. And for the many in the congregation who are standing on behalf of their loved ones, Lord, there is no distance in prayer. Wherever that husband is, that father, that mother, that wife, that son, that daughter, that friend, that neighbor, God, reach out your hand of mercy. Reach out right now, Father. Touch them. Break those yokes. Open their eyes and let them see the things you have in store. Great things for those who will walk uprightly. Give them a heart to serve you right now. Touch them. Touch them right now. A desire to call upon you. Break those yokes right now. Deliver them and set them free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray a prayer for those that are sick now. I know there are some of you that are sick. Put your hands where you feel sick right now. Put your hands where you feel sick right now. Maybe on your head. Maybe on your back. Wherever it is right now. Amen. I'm going to let you sit right now. Right now, I want you to believe God. But these that are here tonight... In the name of Jesus, I speak healing. Healing upon your body right now. Every infirmity upon you must go in the name of Jesus. I want you to come this way. There are some brethren here just want to give you a little further information. They're right here with you. All right. We're going to keep on praying. How many of you tonight? Maybe there's a trace of resentment. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. Because, you know, not much people raise their hands as an indication. My brother, I always resent him. Amen. But you see the need to improve. Because there are many times God come your way. But you never get the breakthrough. And you wonder why. It's because there's a measure of resentment. And you never allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. 
you want to improve in that area, which I believe is so important, I'd like you to come tonight. Come, we're going to have prayer in that area. And if there are other areas that you sense the need for prayer, of improvement in your spiritual life, it's still a little early, I want you to come to this altar tonight. Maybe you need prayer for your marriage. Whatever it is, I want you to come. Maybe you're feeling discouraged tonight. God is a God who can encourage you. Maybe you're feeling weak. He can strengthen you. Whatever the needs are, he's a God who's an all-inclusive God. Nothing is too hard for him to do. I'd like you to come tonight. Whatever. You're pursuing something that you need God's direction, you need God's favor, whatever it is, come. I want to join my feet with you this evening. I want to join my feet with you this evening. Let's come. Worship team, if you want to sing a song, we're going to pray together. Come. Come tonight. Those of you who want to be seated, you can be seated. But those of you who need special prayer, come. Come, let God minister to you tonight. You want to see the power of God's words and demonstration tonight? Come. Amen. Maybe there's some of you tonight I feel a lot of the Lord to say, there's a situation that is bringing a measure of fear that you don't know how it will turn out, how the outcome is, will be. I want you to come tonight. God wants to bring up a measure of settlement in your heart tonight. Come. Come. I don't know what it is tonight, but there's a situation that is developing that is bringing a measure of fear that you don't know how it will turn out and creating a measure of uneasiness. I want you to come. God wants to intervene on that matter. I want you to come tonight. He wants you to trust him. Come. Come tonight. Yes. Anybody else tonight? Amen. If you want to be seated, you could. If you want to keep standing, whatever you want to do. But I want you to open your heart tonight. Open your heart tonight and cry out unto him because he is here. Nothing is too hard for him to do. Nothing is too hard for him to do. Sometimes we don't like the way he, he does it. But trust him. He knows what he's doing. Trust him. He knows what he is doing. Thank you, Father. Thank you tonight for these at the altar. Father, rest your hands tonight. You know the needs tonight in this life. Be ministered tonight from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Receive that breakthrough, whatever it is. I believe God, lift up that spirit right now. Be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your words go forth tonight. Sink in the hearts of this sister right now. Bring that strength by your power and by your might. Break those yokes tonight, Lord. Devil, you are a liar. I decree that victory upon you. Receive that encouragement right now. In the name of Jesus, be encouraged. Lift up that spirit. Lift up that spirit. Yes, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, sister, just rejoice tonight. God can take control of that situation. Put it in his hands. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's tonight. Let him fight it for you. In the name of Jesus. When he fight, he fight good. When he fight, amen, you don't have to worry about losing. He's always a winner. In the name of Jesus. We come against that situation. I speak direction in it right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your hands be upon this sister right now. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Every walk of the enemy, we put it to flight. I speak the word of encouragement right now. Receive that direction right now. As the Lord is ministered by his power and by his spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying to trust him. Rest in him tonight. You're not able because you don't have the resources on your own to handle that situation. But let him work it out for you right now. Let him work it out for you right now. Stand still. Stand still, said the Lord. And allow him to do what he desires. Because he will work on your behalf and for your interest. Receive that miracle right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for doing it right now. I decree done upon you. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Receive that breakthrough right now. Every work of the enemy, every form of discouragement. Let this come in against you right now, sister. Right now, God. God want to work on your behalf. Every measure of resistance. I come against it right now. Allow him to have his way. Stand still. Stand still. Submit and surrender. Let him work on your behalf. It may not come to pass in one day. Maybe two days. Three days. But what he starts he will finish. Yes in his right timing. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you for the breakthrough right now. Lord, let your anointing, let your blessing. I speak that word tonight, right now, in your life. Receive. Receive that breakthrough. That measure of discouragement be replaced with encouragement. Be lifted up tonight in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, brother, receive it. Receive that strength in your life right now. God is bigger than your situation. He's, he, he, he did it in the past and he can do it again right now. Trust him right now. Don't give up right now. Don't give up. He's working on your behalf. He's working behind the scenes. He just wants you to keep your eyes upon him. In the name of Jesus. Strength and this confidence and faith. In the name of Jesus, I speak that word tonight. Receive that deliverance. Receive it. Receive that strength right now. Yes, sister. Nothing is too hard for him to do. Nothing is too hard. Yes, open that door. Let him come in. Let him have his way tonight. Let him have his way. Trust him. He know, he know what he's doing right now. He's working on your behalf. He will bring it to pass. Yours, yours be broken right now. Receive that strength. Lift up this feet right now in the name of Jesus. Speak that word tonight on behalf of our brother. Let your strength, let it come upon him right now. Yes, I speak that word tonight from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Nothing is too hard for you to do, Lord. Nothing is too hard. Activate your words right now. Right now. As this faith, Lord, let it rise. Let it rise to a high level in the name of Jesus. Every trace of resistance, we put it to flight right now. Let there be stability right now. Let there be confidence in your words, Lord, so you can bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak that victory right now. I decree and declare done as you keep your eyes upon him, as you keep your focus upon him, as you trust him, he's able to do the impossible. Right now, Lord, yes, Jesus, I speak that word tonight. Oh, Lord God, every doubt and unbelief can come against it. Yes, Lord, you're more than enough right now. And I speak that the word tonight. Bring that assurance right now that you're more than able. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you've already done and what you will continue to do. Just keep your eyes upon him. Keep trusting him. He's able to make a way where there is no way. Allow him to do whatever he desires. It might be strange sometimes, but trust him. He know what he's doing. Bring that faith and confidence tonight to trust you. In the name of Jesus, I speak that word tonight. Yes, receive that strength in your life. Receive it right now from the cross. Get to the soul of your feet. I believe God for it right now. Yes, break those yokes. Every unbelief, I come against it. Every disobedience, Lord, every mess, every trace, we put it to flight. And Lord, let obedience come right now. What do we say to you? Do it. You may not like it sometimes. You may not like the things he asks you to do. But he, he's asking you for your interest. You know what he's doing. And he will bring it to pass. And I speak it right now in your life. Whatever is troubling you right now, God is able to take the same thing that is intended to work evil and work it for your good. He's able to reverse it right now in the name of Jesus. Stand still, sister. Keep your focus on the Lord. Let nothing, let nothing throw you off course. But keep your expectation high. Because he will fulfill his promises. For he's not slack concerning his promises. Like some men count slackness. But he will bring it to pass at the right time. I believe it. And I claim it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you already. Thank you for doing it right now. You're already at work tonight. You're already doing the works right now. And we claim it right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it right now. Yes, Father. Thank you. We give you thanks in advance. Thank you for doing it, oh Lord God. You know best how to do it. Sometimes we not understand. Your ways are higher than our ways. But we thank you for bringing that victory. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. He is able, more than able. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. To do much more than I could ever yes, Lord. dream.
Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To make me thank you, what he wants me to be. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To make me what he wants me to be. Oh, yes. Give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you so much for hearing the word tonight. Let it not depart from your heart.